in the search, right? You would have seen Google automatically provides you with some recommendations. And if you have ever wondered, how does Google know what you are trying to search or very close to it? Not only in Google, if you are a techie and uh, there is a high probability you would have used uh, tech stack or uh, other um, forums. Even there, when you are trying to raise a question, it will show similar questions on the topic. So if you have ever experienced it, then welcome to the world of text mining. So text mining is not very complicated topic. It is as easy as a number crunching. Uh, in this video, what you are going to see is, uh, given a set of documents, how do you convert that into a, a numbers or a format through which a machine can process it? And certain things which comes very naturally to us, how machine does it? So let's see, it, uh, see through some examples. We are not going to touch any code in this video. It is purely concept, okay? So I'm going to take a simple algorithm called bag of words. So I have three documents. Why I call this as documents instead of statements? Because the same algorithm can be applied even to documents which has multiple statements. So the concept remains the same, but for uh, the sake of simplicity, I have just kept three statements and each of the statement I refer to as document one, two, and three. So document one, it says an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Uh, document two says aspiring to be fit, eat more fruits such as apple. Document number three says Sachin aspired to be a great batsman. Very naturally or intuitively, we can easily say document one and two are more closely related because they share something in common on health, whereas document one and three are totally unrelated because one talks about uh, health and three talks about such in a great cricketer, something related to sports. This is a conclusion which we naturally come, right? We don't uh, bang our heads to come to this conclusion, but if we want the machine to interpret this three statements or documents in our uh, context, we need to teach the machine how to do it. So in this video, let's see, first of all, how do I convert this set of words into a machine readable format, right? Okay, so I have the three statements which I have just said or I call this document. In the very first step, I am not doing anything rather just arranging them. So an apple a day keeps the doctor away and all the other words, I have not done anything, just arranged it. So as the name indicated, it is a bag of words. I have created a bag full of words. So yes. Step two, very simple thing. I have removed the duplicates. So the word apple was there multiple times and the word B was there multiple times, the word 2 was there. So I have just removed the duplicates and kept it as such. So step 1 and 2, quite easy, right? Now let's move on to step 3. Step 3, I remove the stopper words. So what do you mean by stopper words? Say for example, the uh, word here A, and B, all this, they don't convey a meaning by itself. It requires a verb or it requires a noun or it requires certain times even an adjective so they cannot be independent so i have removed such commonly occurring terms which doesn't have a meaning by itself so now we have got a list of words removing the duplicates and removing all the filler or the stopper words step four i have introduced a concept called lemma lemma is pretty simple say for example when you, when i say doing or when I say done, all this originate from a single verb called do. So in our case, aspiring, aspired, all this originate from a single verb called aspire. So I'm just going to remove uh, 
this words right and put it as one single verb so aspiring and aspired been changed to aspire so step four right now step five we'll get on to vector formation so what i have done is whatever i have got in step four so now you have to remember in step one i had 24 words because this is the words you have right 24 words and in step 4 I have just converted into 14 just by removing the duplicates and removing the stopper words and removing the lemma right step 5 I am just arranging them vertically and then if the word is there in the document I am putting a 1 if that is not there I am putting a 0 for example let us consider the same thing hmm. apple is there yes 1 Aspire is there in document D1? No, so 0. Away is there in document? Yes. So I just keep arranging it in this uh, 1 and zeros depending on their presence. So now I have got a vector. Is that the job done? Uh, not really. We have one more step. That's what you call as uh, calculating the TF IDF. The TF is pretty easy. It talks about the number of occurrence of a word in a document which prominently means higher the TF, the document is more about that particular word, right? Which is straightforward. IDF, inverse document frequency, is little tricky. It talks about how relevant is a word in the entire domain of that particular topic. For example, let's take one simple example to understand this TF IDF. Uh, yeah. Now, this is a statement I have. I take it you don't like cats. He hated cats, but he carried the kitten all the way to the kitchen and back simply to show her one. Um, now, if you take this statement, I see the word cats appears thrice. And the total number of words we have here is 39. So the term frequency is for the, for the word cat is the number of times the word occurs divided by the total number of words so you get this is the factor now assume that you the domain is about animal kingdom and you have thousand documents and this is one document right and there are hundred documents with the word cat in it so the inverse document frequency will be the total number of documents divided by the number of documents which has that particular word in this context cat so log of 1000 by 100 is log of 10 base to the 10 is equal to 1 so the tf idf weightage for cat is a multiplication as a product of the term frequency and the idf now for each of this in our case there are only three documents so we need to calculate the TF IDF factor for each other word and multiply it. That's the way we form the vector. So what we have done essentially is taken a set of words or statements or even it might be a blog or it might be any document and converted it into a vector. So this IDF right, if you really see uh, if the now, if, you, if the word is less used, that means the value of the fraction will increase because the denominator will decrease, correct? So the number of documents which, will having the, which has that word is less. So basically, if you are someone who is going to, who wants your blog or your document to appear higher in your search ranking, you need to choose certain words like that which has a higher IDF factor which will improve your weightage right now this is a very simple bag of words algorithm it's not a one size fit all bag of words algorithm do has certain disadvantages for example uh, if I have a word which is misspelled for example instead of apple typing here if I say this is a spelling mistake now in this case it will treat it as a separate word so spelling mistakes it doesn't uh, auto correct right and number two it doesn't treat the relationship 
say for example a cat hit the wall and a wall hit the cat both are same and it also doesn't treat the negation for example I can say I love machine learning and the second statement I can say I don't love machine learning but in this case right both are identical except a word called don't and it doesn't understand that word makes a world of difference between liking and disliking right uh, so for a beginner this is good and the other disadvantages as you might have seen the greater the length of the document the vector length is also is bigger so it requires a lot of crunching number crunching but with the processing speed which we have at our disposal it is still easier uh, but again that's not the best of the way to do it so there are certain disadvantages to summarize it doesn't hold the relationship uh, if there are spelling mistake or if there is a foreign word a word with another language or a domain specific word it doesn't handle it extremely well it requires a lot of number crunching capabilities though it is not a greater disadvantage but still it has an impact on the performance right and it doesn't treat negation quite well so we do have alternates but to begin with this is how a bag of words operates and if you are looking for some serious book to understand it more uh, I would recommend to buy this book Building Machine Learning Systems by Python you have both a paperback and a Kindle edition that's a the book which you will not regret it, treat, it teaches the algorithms extremely well right um, and once you know this basics then it becomes easier then to uh, approach KNN algorithm and fuzzy CNN algorithm which will help you to understand how one statement is related to the other so as I said the first and second are related whether the first and third are more disjoint which comes this type of observation comes naturally to us and how does a machine does we will see in subsequent videos and if you are wondering you have to write so much of logic to do this uh, I have a good news for you Python has all this inbuilt you need not write logics there is a model called Spacey which we can use and it will, uh, it will do all these things for you but as I said this video I'm not getting into the technology in the subsequent videos we will see more of it hope you like this session okay thank you